<laughs> so we're we're excited about Clark. And uh, you talk about you can't have too many uh, defensive backs that can cover and take the ball away. And um, the quick, athletic, speed, instincts, ball skills. Again, a tough competitive player. Played a tough program. Uh, I mean, the way they do things uh, there. So uh, very excited about the player. And again, we always go back to it, but high character, um, smart, intelligent. Uh, he's about what we're about. So we're excited to add him uh, to the group. Yeah, I mean, he, he can do both. And so that that's usually, a, you know, this isn't a, a full on projection. You know, there's so many different coverages when you're wa watching guys and when you're projecting them. And there's some guys in this draft that maybe in a certain scheme they're a safety, but they end up covering the slot all the time. Or there's guys outside, but depending on if they're a big man team, you know, they're going to get inside anyways by matchups or, you know, the different, the multiple schemes they run. Um, but yeah, with, with a guy like Clark, highly productive, which, which I think is one of the better. Uh, programs that sustain success. Uh, it's a lot of res we have a lot of respect for that Utah program, and certainly the way they play defense. And so, we loved our interactions with him. This is a guy that we had conviction on across the board, and we were excited that he was there when we picked him. There's guys, sometimes guys like him who can play inside or outside, and also at his height, which he talked about. Sometimes safety ends up being in their longer term future. Is that possible? Do you see that? You see it, you know, Mike. It's it's just that. You know, we joke about it all the time. Like I was joking last night about D-Led's depth chart and stuff like that. It, it's things have become so multiple. You know, when you're sitting there and you teams that want to bring a lot of pressures, or they're trying to disguise, or they they take a, a nickel corner and you're bringing pressure, and all of a sudden he goes and plays the back half. You know, it's just that's that's what's in, in vogue right now. You know, multiple schemes in the back end. Uh, you know, final coverage. You know, that's what sometimes too when you're trying to trick these quarterbacks. And so what that does is like you know they show them something and then. Guys are now running the, the, the middle, like the middle replayer in cover two that you know, I used to see, you know, Brian Erlacher run. It was always a Mike linebacker. Well, now guys are multiple, whether it's a nickel, sometimes the corner safety. So these guys have a lot of experience coming in, and that's just kind of where the game's gone. It's no different than the offensive skill guys. I know that was a lot, but I just wanted to give context to it. It's like it's not as big of a leap sometimes with some of these players because they've done some of these jobs before, depending on the schemes they've come from. With a guy like Clark, though, highly – Intelligent, highly instinctive, his competitiveness. Uh, I'm sure you guys could feel that in the interview. I mean, I was about to ask y'all talk to him already. Yeah, pretty confident, isn't he? Yeah. 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 <laughs> they play pretty good you, uh, defense at Utah too. So. Yeah. Terry, Terry, you mentioned smart, intelligent. One of the first things he mentioned to us was uh, how much emphasis he puts on film study. Not something you, you necessarily hear a lot of college defensive backs bring up. So high in the conversations. How much of an impact was that to you? The, yes, sir. That and, part of his game. Yes, sir. And, and you can see that because a player like this, and um, when you talk about anticipation and and the, the the way he studies routes, and you can see the to have six interceptions. That's a you, you got to study film, and um, so so you know that he's that type of guy. And, and the football character is really high. Again, we always talk about our area scouts and how good of a job they do. Um, they're in the schools and they gather all the information, but all high grades on those areas, the football character, the personal character, the football intelligence, um, film junkie, gym rat, all those things. And, and, and so you know all that about him, and then it matches with the tape when you watch the tape. And then when we get to spend more time with him in person, um, it all goes together. Because we wouldn't put too much if we spend – 20 minutes with them at the combine. We spend a little time with the, when you spend time with players. You what has a larger weight is all the information that the area scouts have gotten um, on the player for the last couple of years. And so, but that part he definitely checks that intelligence part that that box. He was talking about um, his his uh, play strength. Is that something that you can see on tape in terms of being physical? Absolutely. I mean, you see when he walks in there. You know, that's what sometimes people. They get so caught up on the weight, right? And everybody's body comps are different. You know, even when you're going through, Scott, and, you know, it's, it depends if you're a rigid thinker, fix like, hey, I have to have guards all under 310. Well, there's some guys now that are, could be 325 and they don't have a lot of body fat and they can move. You know, it's, it's you know, there's a lot more that goes in than just that fixed number of the weight in the way that a guy like Clark, I mean, I mean, he, he's a muscled up guy, you know, so that weight and the way he carries it, you know, dense, you know, that, that it, especially this time of year, whether it's hand size or, you know, the weight they weigh in at the, in, at the combine and then 
they don't do anything else, and then they come back. They won't weigh in at the pro days and things like that. But it's a lot of it's a body composite how they're how they're really built. And so if you've, I've had players that are 190 90 pounds, and you know they're they're built differently, and they just they're compact. And, and there's other guys that are maybe 190 that every time they go on the field they get something's injured or. You know, same thing with the, the big guys. So I think a lot gets made about the number, but there's a lot of other factors that go into it. In that respect, Terry, we talked a lot this week just about finding value, where you can find value with players. And he's a guy, when you look at his production, he's, you know, All-American, and he's at 113. I would imagine that's in, down, in part down to his, his size. Is that just an area where you feel like you can um, man, manage that in, in some respects and, and pick up a – a good ball playing defensive back. You're saying that with the size being an exception in terms of size. Yeah, yeah but if you, if you really look through it, um, there've been a lot of corners at that height that have played in the NFL and been really productive in the NFL. And and, and you just go through the list. There's a lot of really good football players, not just in um, recent years, but even historically. Um, you look at a lot of guys that are at that height. And but they have to have okay. Where are the special traits that they have? Okay, instincts, ball skills, um, quickness, athleticism, speed. He has a lot of traits and a lot of factors, and he's got the makeup to make it and be a productive player. So when you look at the history, because you want to know okay, how much of an exception is this player? You look at the history. There have been a lot of corners that have been successful in the league um, at or around that height. The four five one or guy with faster time. Or do you have some comps that? Where's that time from? Uh, NFL.com. Super Scout. Who, who um, time? Combine. Where are those? Time or electric? No, but where Combine. are they from though? NFL.com. I wonder who gets those. Combine. Just like. I'm just asking. Do you have yeah. better time? Yes or no? Yeah, we had different times okay. than that. Yeah. Don't, I just always wonder though when I see stuff on TV. I always wonder where those are from. I don't know if you're timing on watching TV and time and stuff or no, what. You don't do that. <laughs> So, you so you, you can go on your, NFL. I call the scouts and get it too, but um, got it. Do you do it off the TV with your stopwatch? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I do that for hang time at the game with my, with my uh, phone. Love it. And then Marquis will either verify or deny. Well, but, did you ask coach. him if that if he ran a four or five? Did you ask him that? Uh, no, I did not. You should you should ask him I when he gets see how he that. responds. But I, yeah. I, I uh, you know four five one. I wrote it down because that seemed like that'd be a little slow for five. No, we did have him. Um, our our, our Scouts had faster times. And what we do, the, the numbers we get, it's really, it's literally our scouts timing. You want? You can, we'll give you, sit, sit, we'll, we'll give you the numbers. We will. We'll get you everything you need, man. Just, just let, give, give Bassity a list. And what you do when you negotiate, the way you do it is, Put on your list. So if you put, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you, Led. Right. Put like ten things on the list, okay? okay? And go overboard with some of them, right. and you know you're only gonna get forty percent of them. Yeah. So, so you know I'm gonna get these four, but then you got to put some other stuff right. on there, right. right? Okay. But be, you know, don't just ask them for three or four things. Ask them for yeah, ten, and know you're gonna get some of them. <laughs> you say you would have been like a, like a one of those ambulance chasers. Oh, um, no, I don't know. On I can see lead on billboards. I see him on a billboard. Hurt, hurt on the job. <laughs> <laughs> call, call lead. Uh, call lead. <laughs> All right. Corporate. Corporate. <laughs> it's day three. We got it. We got yeah. <laughs> None of us is. Y'all have stuff. We have stuff. I'm all about yeah. off the rails. But since we're talking about corners, you guys yeah. did pick up AJ's fifth year option. I mean, I'm guessing it was a fairly easy decision, or yeah. I mean, obviously Derek can talk to you about the mechanics of it, but yeah. I mean, AJ is a guy that uh, another guy that we're happy, just like Chris. You know, that was here when we got here, and. Uh, Love working with AJ, you know, so, you know, you get that option and, again, you know, how it plays out, how it play out. Obviously, it played out well with Chris, but, uh, so, yeah, we're excited. We love what AJ's about, what he brings to his team day in and day out. Coach, you've been saying that the, the, there's going to be a heightened level of competition in, right. in camp and things like that. If, if you look at this group of cornerbacks now, you right. just added Phillips and AJ and Jeff and Mike and, all the experienced guys in the back, Cornell and Darren, I'm 
forgetting and D, right? You have all these guys who yeah. played. It seems like at, at this particular position, it could be as competitive and as tough decisions as you'll have. Absolutely, in, Scott. On the roster. Right, and that's and that's what you want. And it, and you know it's the business we're in, and and uh, it doesn't mean we don't love all those guys and we don't let them compete, and we got to be fair about it. And uh, I think it'll bring out the best in the best in our team and, and in all our players. That's because that's what it is on Sunday. I mean, it's the most competitive league in all professional sports. The cool thing is, though, Scott, is we don't live in this rigid box where you say, okay, you have to have this many players at this position, this many players at this position. And and when you come up with that 53-man roster, right, um, you, we look at it like we're going to keep the best players, right? So you named all those corners. If those guys are balling and it's going really well, then and we end up keeping – Seven corners, and and you're let, you, you're not just going to say okay if you're the whether you're the fourth safety or the fifth at this position or whatever oh you're guaranteed a spot no oh, man and and vice versa if we only feel like we have three guys that we're really excited about in the building right now then we're going to have to go get them from somewhere else but we don't live in this fix fix box where we have to if we get good football players they can help us win and they can help this roster then we're going to keep those good football players much like as we approach, so we have the seventh round picks and then we got undrafted free agency. So we're not just looking at it like, okay, this is how many players we need in camp at this spot. And so we need to add this many players here, this many, no, we're just saying, hey, let's keep bringing in good football players. If we like them, if we're excited about them, bring them in and we'll figure it out as opposed to worrying about uh, certain numbers at certain positions. Would you all see a first team All-American there? How much stock do you put in that or is that, uh just uh, you know, a guy who had a really good season and was recognized by uh, folks as uh, being a, one of the top corners in the country. It, it doesn't, uh, for me personally, you know, it, it doesn't really. Now, the things that do get you excited, any kind of accolades, or hey, was he a um, the personal accolades? Like mm -hmm. you, you know, in that school, like what the coaches say about him, he was a team captain, and they held him in high regard for these reasons. But those kind of accolades are usually just based off statistics. So. That doesn't, um, that wouldn't do any, move the needle for us. Um, what is his, I mean, we see the uh, uh, playmaking and ball skill numbers. What does that look like on the, the, the detailed film review that you all do? Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, Terry talked about his instincts. He led, uh, you know, the guys that can anticipate. To me, he's got great spatial awareness. Uh, and then playing in different schemes and, and doing different jobs out there. The guy that, you know, prepares, it, but it shows up on the tape. I mean that's that's the thing. I mean you can get all these numbers and and there's there's obviously very uh, interesting advanced metrics and you look at them and then so I was trying to give context the other night about you know yards after contact it could be completely different players. So you, you see that you get excited about it, but you still got to match the tape, right? And and so with a guy like Clark, when you look at those numbers too, you know you're right because sometimes you guy I've, I've been around a guy that and, he, and good for him he gets overpaid in free agency because. You know, the ball tipped his way, and this is one of those years. And, and, and nobody, and you're happy for the guy, but you know, the way the, the way they got the turnovers, you know, the tip ball at the line of scrimmage, and they just happened to be there at the right time, and thankfully they catch it or whatever. But the guy, you can see an instinct that can break on the ball and go back and track the ball. Like, those are the things that get you fired up. And as the old scout, uh, how does his, you know, how does his uh, hips flip and stuff? So, all that, all that kind of good stuff. You said as an old scout? As, yeah, yes. Yeah, from, you know, the scouts I always talk about. Yeah. Um, the, the corners being able to flip their hips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. loose, fluid, the transition, um, all those things are uh, very good. Very good. Yep. What you were just referencing, if, if, do you believe in ball skills, if, whatever that term might mean? I mean, some guys just have a knack for, for finding the ball, or is that just a throwaway term that we use when they it, happen to end up? Yeah, it just depends on what, you know, context, uh, certainly. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you, you get excited about the production, Josh, and it's a great question. But yeah, well, you, you know, how how they went about it. You gotta, can they replicate that? I guess was this just one of those years, you know, where things was it's like with sacks. All of a sudden, the guys like here, here, and then one year is here. Well, okay, and then it's back to here. Like, don't take it away from them. And it's great production on that part. But how they go about and how they go after the, the football. Same thing when you're looking at wideouts or any kind of pass catchers. Can they track the ball? Um, and some guys can obviously do it way, way better than others. You know, the best example I, I think that that could correlate that that 
um, another reference point, like a guy like A.J. Brown, you know, A.J. was a really good baseball player. And uh, the way he tracks the ball, and I'm sure you guys saw that play in the Super Bowl, you saw him make that plays where that's special what he can do. And there are not a lot of guys. I mean, they, 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 you know, it's whether that was the way he was, you know, growing up and new sports and different different things, or you know, certainly you can fine tune some of those. That's what people work and all that stuff. But there's some instinct of stuff that that some guys are just they've got it, and other guys they don't. No matter how, more, how hard they work at it. Well, I mean, certainly some of his vision, but, um, you know, is there a, a, a test that can find that what made that athlete great at that compared to the next? I haven't seen one like that. You know, that's why you got to trust the, all the information from the scouts. You got to take it all in. It's never going to be perfect. You know, you're all looking for advantages like that. Um, you know, there's some guys that may have it all of a sudden, but they're in a pressure situation and maybe they're. You know, the division goes and like closes back up, and they can't do that. But you see them making a practice over and over, and you're like, "Oh, it's going to come on." And all of a sudden, I don't know what it is, anxiety or something, and they just they can't get over it. And you certainly try to work through it. But I, I wish I had a perfect answer for you. I don't. But that's why you got to take it all into context, and and that's why I'm so fired up. And the staff we have upstairs, uh, the way that our scouts, our football staff, and I talk about it, everybody that's involved, uh, and the coaching staff, uh, certainly it makes Terry and I's job a lot easier.